everyone and welcome to green monk tv this is the smart grid heavy hitter show and with me today i have chairman john wellinghoff john is chair of the federal energy regulatory commission john the federal energy regulatory commission you regulate basically the energy sector in the us uh, we've seen a lot of developments in the smart grid space in the last three, four years, especially in the last two years. And we've seen definitions of smart grids kind of expand as Recovery Act monies are made available. What, what's the FERC's uh, view on smart grids? Well, you're right, Tom. There has been uh, an expanding of the definition. Our agency is responsible for the wholesale side of electric sales and electric energy transmission and regulation in this country. We believe the smart grid is um, best defined as providing consumers the opportunity to communicate with and participate in the electric system in ways that can control their costs. And that's the way we're really de defining the smart grid. And in that regard, we're responsible for, uh, example, setting the standards for the smart grid. We will actually promulgate the rules for the smart grid. The standards are being developed by a group out of the a Department of Commerce and a number of stakeholders in the electric industry. But once they develop them, they'll give them over to us and we'll actually take them and put them into rules. So we'll have standard rules of interoperability, of uh, communication between different devices so that consumers down at their end in buildings, commercial and residential buildings, can actually communicate up to the grid in ways that they can then better control their costs and at the same time they can help make the grid more efficient. Uh, if, if we're talking about two-way communications between utility companies and consumers, uh, there seems to have been a bit of a backlash with some of the early rollouts of smart grids. And I'm thinking of ones in Texas and California recently. Uh, what, what's the FERC's uh, what's the FERC's thinking on that? Well, there actually there absolutely has been a backlash. I agree. Uh, in fact, uh, there was a very interesting article in the Electricity Journal recently about a gentleman who was a marketing PhD who got a smart meter and. Uh, time of use rates, and I think his uh, first month his usage went up 163 percent, and his bill went up like 70 percent. And so he was trying to figure out, you know, how is this helping me out? Um, the problem I think to date has been that many distribution utility companies have been rolling out smart meters without making consumers smart at the same time. We need to give consumers the tools that they need to utilize the smart grid in a way that will help them control their costs. If you don't do that, it's like you know somebody coming and driving a Ferrari into your driveway, setting it there, and not giving you the keys. I mean, if they don't have the tools and the ability to use the smart grid in a way that can control their costs, then consumers are going to be upset. So I'm seeing this happen in certain um, distribution utilities which we don't have direct jurisdiction over because those are retail entities where they have retail relationships with their customers. But I have had a lot of conversations with uh, the CEOs of those companies and indicated to them that I think they really need to rethink their strategies. The strategies need to be not simply putting a quote-unquote smart meter in the house, but you've got to give the consumer the ability to see on the internet how their usage is varying. You have to give them uh, devices, dashboards inside the house where they can see uh, consumption on a daily basis. And then you have to also give them the ability to uh, look at what appliances they can change usage of at different times to ultimately reduce costs and control overall costs within their house. If you don't do that, there's going to be a backlash because consumers are not going to understand how they can best take advantage of these things unless they're given the tools. But consumers are very smart. Once they are given the tools and once they're given the ability to do this, I think they'll learn very quickly and I think they'll see that there are great advantages to having this kind of technology um, inside their homes and businesses. Uh, last question. Um, we're seeing some kind of pilot rollouts of smart meters. 
in in some jurisdictions in the US, but you know very little beyond that. How long do you think it will be before we start to see full end-to-end -end rollouts of smart grids, including in-home devices and demand response technologies and proper pricing, uh, real-time pricing uh, being rolled out? Well, there's a number of jurisdictions where they're going beyond pilots in the United States, certainly. California is one, Texas is another, I believe Pennsylvania and Massachusetts are other jurisdictions. So I think you're going to see this take place um, rather rapidly. I think over the next five to seven years, you'll see a fairly full rollout of full-scale uh, smart grid technology and the in-home devices, I hope, are following very quickly. As I mentioned, I think it's a big mistake for utilities to put in simply the smart meters without the in-home devices and the other and the internet connections and the other tools that consumers need to make use of these smart meters. And so I hope that we see the two coming together very quickly. John, that's been great. Thanks a million for coming on the show.